Let's look on another ways to prepare background for our scenery. Here's our basic image. If you remember, when we render as multipath, we also have a different type of image. And one of them, if you remember, it was a Z depth. So this image, which you represent in gray scale, the closer and far away. And of course, it will be darker or lighter. The more far away, the lighter it is. What's happening with some application when they read it, they interpret it how far away object by brightness. In some cases, it's kind of very interesting way to use it. For example, on a Facebook, they support what we call like simulating 3D when you're moving image kind of changing and they're using just this Z map. So you actually can render inverse because in Facebook black is far away and uh, inverse the image and use it, uploaded both of them as PNG and Facebook and used as a fake 3D. So you can, I have some tutorial about that to do. But overall, what we want to do is use it in Photoshop, this image, to change focus with the blur or sharpness. So we'll add DOF for our image on this. And in some case, I like to do this better way than inside the view because I have the flexibility how to adjust or how much to add blur to this. We'll look on this in a second, how to do. So let's go first, take our background image. I'll go duplicate it and I'll just put it on top. Okay. Next, we'll take our Z depth selecting, hold down controller or command and click. So it will select all image and same will just control C, command C to copy this image, or we can go just edit and please on a copy. So we copy our selection. Let's go inside the channel. We go create a new alpha one and we'll just go ahead, edit, paste. So at this point, we set this as our one of our channel. Okay, let's go ahead and enable channel back. We've got two layer re-enable and select our background copy. Notice we still have our alpha channel there available. Okay, let's deselect everything. And now we can go inside the filter, blur, and we can go to lens blur. Let me adjust just a little bit our lens blur so we can see all the way. The important for now for our background it is um set properly reference so it's meaning if we go on the source and we have it alpha one that we just created we'll select at this point we can adjust our blur focus so we can set where we want that focus going let's go to um increase blur radius kind of significant so we can see how it's happened and you can see right here we have it. Um, I can go set my focus on this person. I can set on a rocket and you can see rocket become sharp and there are my robot become not sharp. We can set on a mountain and you can see how it's changed. Now the blur is start changing. The couple of things, of course, we have effect because I applied too much of the um, blur, but we need Let's set curvature 12, so we have this edge properly. Adjust it. We can add a little bit of the noise. Monochromatic. Noise will help also with edges a little bit, but at right now we don't need noise. Overall, what I was showing how it is blur. Um, right here on the edges, you can still see because it's very sharp. Otherwise, we don't have it that anti-alasking that happened in camera. However, it is what happened if you have a perfect set on the focusing area. Okay, so let's go ahead. For example, I want to focus on this area closer. And in our case, if we want person was standing here, we can just click and focus on the person. On this case, you can see how far away and blur the away. Okay, so let's go ahead. We can take reduce our blurness so it still be there but it's not as much right there let's go ahead click ok okay to preview we can go ahead zoom in 
Then you can see before and after. You can see how it's changed sharpness. And we applied. This is very nice when you do uh, like macro inside the VU render and you can have a Z depth, so it's always kind of good. You don't adjust the lenses. The reason is in a VU when you render sometimes take a long time and blurry it's take quite a bit long time. It does process actually more natural look I found out than inside the Photoshop. But if you are just testing, you can always render one with Z depth test inside the view, see what your set is and after work from this. But overall right here it's how we can add blurness. Okay, so we're done with the blurring. Next what I want to do is replacing and we render another multipass like mask for all of them. So let's go ahead and work little bit on this. To create a mask, we want to add elements that we want to replace for our background. And for example, right here we have a kind of piece of dirt. And I'm just going to select increase size here. This is probably about horizontal line. However, it does not look necessarily nice. So we want distortion for this. I'll hold down shift key, click on one side and drag one second part out and now we'll go to edit transform distortion and we'll take these corners and just bring them right here so just give it a little bit this perspective look so let's go ahead click enter and now you can see we have it our element the only problem is we needed to mask them to do that we need our mask that we created before and this one i'll just drag and drop our mask in and this is our one rubber second third and rocket so here we have our elements the one we need to create a combined mask for them so it's meaning on a background we need to go create a new element new mask we'll just create it next let's go back to our first robot and we'll go to click select color range and we'll just Click on white and create right there to maximum. And we'll just select all of this. Click OK. So now we have our mask selected. We can go back to selected mask before. And we can go and fill this with a black color. So this is our one robot. So let's go to our second robot. Same. Select color range. Actually, uh, I need to deselect first. Okay, so we'll go select color range, select our robot, click OK, hide, go back to our mask, fill with the black color. In this case, because my is background black, I can press Command or Control Back Shift, and it will filling out. Okay, so we'll select this one. Let's go to our next one. Select color range because we already pre-select white it's kind of work very good for us okay let's go back here add this and let's do with a, our one last rocket okay select color range okay hide that one and oops actually click here and there we have our all mask applied. So this way, we don't need really worry about going around the feet. It's already applied. All what we need to do right now, it just work a little bit with uh, our texture, how we want to blend. For example, we can go apply a little bit more on a soft light. Okay, and let's go ahead and um, add a little bit more we want to add now how dissipation going inside. Um, one thing, if you want to preserve this mask, we could create another mask um, gradient, or we can always, you can nest at them by creating group them. Okay, so actually, control G, so we can just go right there. Okay, we group that one. Let's go. I cannot even spell right now. 
There you go. Ground. And we can add mask to our ground and use it brush. Okay, let's use it soft type of the round brush. Okay, let's go up, up all the way. Soft edge, a little bit smaller. And we'll go set this to 10% opacity. Let's go to switch black color. And we can just right there start adding. You know, I don't necessarily like this blending mode. So let's see if we can go to um, multiply. Multiply may work a little bit better. Okay. So, and we can now start adding. Actually, you know what, with the blending mode, we should just look, because I'm not sure if, um, some of those blending would work. Okay, there you go, work as I want it. So right here, multiply, let's go scroll, and a nice things about I needed this one. There you go. So interesting, some of this um, with new Photoshop, it's nice because you can go over and preview, see some of this, how they will apply. Color Dutch actually can bring very nicely. But again, overlay, soft lights, this one's work well, is good. Overlay, give it better than shadows, I think, for us. And you can see in a way you want to apply planar light as well add so you can but i think actually overlay was working a little bit better than soft light of course we can go add a little bit more density to this okay because they all combine i want to apply some of the darkness to this Elements so a little bit darker. We go create a new layer. Let's go call this dodge and burn. We'll go fill with 50% gray. Okay, and now what I want to do is take this mask. Okay, we'll go copy, call down control. You see, we can move it. The mask. Okay, let me undo this way. We can hold it alt key or option and when you left click and move you can duplicate it so be sure you not copy don't press control command it just alt and drag so in this case we also applying okay let's go switch to soft lights the same um, mask that we have on our our image to our dodge and burn so in this case we can switch and we can start painting add a little bit more darker to our ground, like in specific areas, because I think it is a little bit brighter. So I'm going 20%, a little bit add more. Right there. And again, it is, look, maybe, you know what, Let's um, disconnect mask and we go to edit, transform, distort. The reason I disconnect mask because I want mask stay there. I just want change underlay. Because when I do this, I can actually stretch even more to create more distortion kind of look. can just add maybe even down so we don't need mask for some of those but if you have it yeah I think this is a little bit better perspective on the distortion more kind of otherwise it was looking too straight okay again we can change coloring but I think this work better and same with our now let's relink, and you can see right here we link it. Then what's happening if I don't link? 
it will stretch my mask as well so my mask will start going away and will go over robot so this is the reason why i unlink because i want my mask don't be disturbed when i put it there okay so this is one way to create us we need to we can add a little bit more noise to this so let's create new layer we'll go to fill this layer with 50 percent gray okay and we'll go to filter noise add noise so we'll just add all of this noise let's add a little bit more digital we'll click ok and some of this on top will I probably need to remove because we don't have ground on this but we'll apply it so anyway and same things we want to take to our noise take mask copy the mask so it's not applied to a robot and we'll switch this noise to soft light okay now if we look closer we'll have a little bit more grainy look just help us to blend kind of but we don't need on top if you remember so what I want to do is take my brush black brush we'll set 100% opacity and we'll just brush all of this stuff away because we don't need that stuff on top okay if you don't know how it's look you can always click um, on a mask shift will disable and alt or option will show you mask so in this case I can enable and just preview okay there you go again alt or option and left click and now we remove the our focus from mask so we can preview it okay let's look what we have so this is our image and all what we did is just add replacing additional ground We just add additional some details to our image so overall in this video we was looking how to add a blur by using z depth for multipass and example how add ground of course we can combine them okay or create other ways thank you for watching this video and please be sure to check um, rest videos from this series.